It is now time for your favorite segment, INMPI with DigiKey. I on MPI. This week's I on MPI is from Texas Instruments. Texas Instruments. I like to mix it up a little bit. This week it's the NPI is from TI. And what's interesting is that this is like this is like a meta NPI because I was researching this NPI and then as I was doing so I discovered other interesting NPIs. So this is gonna be like a journey I'm gonna take you through. A journey um, of NPIs. That's right. So this week uh, the the NPI is the TICC 2652RB, which is a wireless microcontroller, 2.4 gigahertz wireless microcontroller. Let's look at the block diagram. Uh, so every chip company is now doing this thing where it's not enough to have microcontrollers like MSP430, and then separately you have some uh, wireless chip that you or CAN chip that you connect up. Now everything is becoming very integrated. Um, they're taking the the chip, the microcontroller chip and other dies for uh, sub-microcontrollers, for wireless controllers, they're bonding them together and they're putting them in a package to make it super integrated and super small. So TI has been known for a really long time for their CC series of wireless chips. Um, and so the CC2652, and they also have like a sister product, which I'll talk about in a little bit, the 1352. Um, so these are Cortex-M4s. Uh, you can see there in the in the main chip is I'm just gonna get my stats right. It's a Cortex M4, 48 megahertz, 352k of flash, 256k of ROM, and I think that's where they put like the the soft device. Um, that's the software wireless stack. It's in ROM, so you don't have to upload that every time. Uh, 8k of cache and 80k of RAM, SRAM. So it's a uh, you know pretty capable Cortex M4. Got lots of sweet peripherals. Um, and the RB series, the B at the end, stands for uh, BAW, which is the, it's a really interesting technology. And it's basically a built-in high-precision temperature compensated resonator. Looks like this. So it's like a piezoelectric resonator that's in the die, and so you don't need an external crystal. And there's always been internal resonators, um, RC resonators inside of chips. You know, every Cortex I've seen has some basic 8 megahertz or 4 megahertz one that you can then PLL up. Um, but they're usually not that precise. And they're definitely not precise enough to do wireless communications where you have to maintain that frequency and that frequency, the RF frequency is generated from the um, resonator crystal. But the BAWs are precise enough that they can do it. So there's a, a short video. Yeah, for this, we're just going to play a few seconds. A few right seconds, now. but check the video on YouTube because it's, it actually was kind of cool. I was like, what is this BAW? Yeah, so we'll just play a clip. Yeah. At Texas Instruments, we're making groundbreaking advances in bulk acoustic wave resonator technology. For decades, designers have relied on timing devices with external high-frequency quartz-based VCXOs and or integrated LC VCOs for meeting the timing requirements of high-speed applications. But quartz-based solutions can be bulky and expensive. Okay, so sweet. So there's the 2652RB, and um, what's neat is, uh, you know, I actually have one. Why don't we go to the overhead real fast, and I'll show that there is no... Nice, nice uh, coin there. Little sneaky, hey, top secret hey, there. Hey, okay. um, So here is the the main chip. I might even zoom in a little bit and then. So this is the uh, twenty six fifty two RB. You can see there's an antenna here. Uh, these, this is the RC. You know, uh, filter take the differential output, make it uh, uh, single mode, so you can have an antenna. But you see actually that there's usually a crystal here and they don't have it. So there's no like 16 or 18 megahertz crystal that's normally there at 16 or 8 or 4 megahertz. Um, it's not here. This I think might be a 32 kilohertz um, crystal, but that's also optional for low power usage. So you can you basically you save on your bill of materials, you know, 20, 30 cents and you don't need that space, um, but you can still have an RF chipset. OK, so let's go back to uh, this one. Okay, so while I was researching this, though, I found, like, this sister product, which was, like, really fascinating to me. This is the CC1352, um, 
which uh, you can see here. And what's interesting about this chip is it doesn't have the bulk acoustic uh, wave resonator thing, um, but it does have dual RF outputs. It has both uh, 2.4 gigahertz, so of course it can do, uh, and, and like the 2652, it can do BLE, it can do Thread, it can do Zigbee, it can do, you know, any, basically everything except Wi-Fi at the 2.4 gigahertz, but it also has um, a, uh, as you can see at the top, uh, you know, it has 2.35 to 2.5 megahertz, but it also has um, from 287 megahertz up to 1.3 gigahertz, uh, like sub one gigahertz band. So you can do 433, you can do 862, 915, all of your favorite sub gigahertz frequencies you can do as well. So you can do, I know some people like to do Zigbee at sub gigahertz to get wider range. Um, so that's cool. And there's also a CC1352P and 2652P, and that includes a uh, plus 20 dBm output power amplifier built into the die. So you get like massive range with these chips. And again, it's all integrated, which I think is really neat. It's, they're all like basically pin compatible. Not exactly, but you know, because obviously if you have two RF outputs, you're going to drop some GPIO. But for the most part, it's the same chip, the same setup. Um, but you can have different frequencies, different power outputs. It's cool stuff. So it's all part of this family. Okay, another thing that I saw while I was doing these that was really nifty is that there's the main CPU that's Cortex-M4, there's the RF chip, which is basically a Cortex-M0, and you communicate with that, you know, through the SimpleLink uh, firmware. There's also a sensor uh, microcontroller, which is a 16-bit MCU, so it's like some MSP430 something something, and this is an ultra-low-power sensor coordinator chip, and what you can do is you know, one of the issues is that you want to wake up the whole chip, right? And then like enable some sensor, give power to the sensor. You have to wait until that sensor comes up, takes a measurement and goes back to sleep. So what the sensor coordinator can do is it can control the analog digital peripherals and like get measurements for you. It can even do like analog reads, digital writes and reads, um, and then delays like with, with the timer so that you can have this like micro, micro computer start up, get your sensor set up, ready to read the data and then sometime later you can bring up the whole chip as a you know processor wake up and read um, all the sensor data in uh, all at once and then shut down instantly so you can reduce your power usage there so um there's a couple dev boards uh so the one i got is uh this one uh it comes with a debugger it's pretty inexpensive it's got usb by default, it does, you know, BLE, of course, but then you can also try out some of the examples. It does both uh, central and peripheral, in case you're wondering. Um, so it does have, has a bunch of uh, BLE examples um, that comes with the uh, CCS compiler. But then, of course, it also does uh, multiple protocols, and it can do them at the same time. So you can have, like, a ZigBee to BLE bridge, for example, if you wanted, based on this chipset. Um I also really liked the um, resource center for this chip because I was like, you know, I basically spent the weekend and I learned how to use this chip. And it had a really neat tutorial system. Like as you were learning how to install the IDE and you were going through the examples, they had like little quizlets and stuff um, to teach you, you know, how does BLE work? How does Zigbee work? It was pretty easy. Um, I installed it on Windows and I was basically compiling within 20, 30 minutes. Okay. And there's a little short video that they had. We're going to play that, and then we're going to tell you all about it on DigiKey. Yes. We're going to get it, so take it away. At TI, we understand the IoT landscape changes quickly, and developers are constantly adapting. The new SimpleLink platform is here to help. Within a single software environment, developers now have access to a broad, scalable portfolio of microcontrollers that allow 100% application code portability. How do we do this? It starts with TI Drivers, a collection of completely portable, easy to use functional APIs for the SimpleLink MCU peripherals, all built on a consistent hardware abstraction layer. TI RTOS is then integrated into the Software Development Kit, or SDK. Industry standard POSIX APIs enable application code portability between various RTOS kernels, along with connectivity options and wireless stacks. Let's say you want to design a new home thermostat. With this Common Core software, you can use an MSP432 MCU to manage the interface and start delivering differentiated products quickly. 
and it's easy to scale this design for new connected applications. To add local Wi-Fi network control, simply migrate your original code to the new CC3220 wireless MCU, which comes preloaded with the needed Wi-Fi stack, and you're done. But what about commercial buildings or other industrial spaces? Once again, you can easily port your application to the Bluetooth 5 ready CC2640 R2F wireless MCU or the CC1350 device with an integrated long range sub 1 GHz transceiver for new functionality. With one investment, you have now created thermostats for the home, a building, and several industrial applications. It's just that simple. Let us help you build the next generation of connected devices using the new SimpleLink MCU platform. One environment, unlimited potential. Okay. okay, and where can you get this Lady Ada? You can get all these chips and the dev boards, everything else I uh, mentioned over at DigiKey. Go to digikey.com and search for CC265, and you'll see the whole series, or also uh, the 20, sorry, the CC1352. So there's a whole family of different chips. Again, you know, some of them have this acoustic wave oscillator, and some of them don't. Some do sub gigahertz, some don't. Um, but they're all, uh, as far as I can tell, 2.4 gigahertz BLE. Uh, thread, Zigbee, etc. Uh, 802.54. Um, so cool stuff from TI, and I'm I'm playing around with this, and I might even uh, show this off on uh, upcoming Desk Data. All right. Hi, on MPI.